Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video doing the ENSO update for March for today's uh, second video. So uh, yeah, we're going to bring you an update about everything that's going on ENSO wise, you know, in terms of landing yet, El Nino, all of that kind of thing. So uh, I'll bring you an update for it all uh, in a second. To say that the first video released today was the uh, UK weather forecast for this final day of March. Have a look at that if you would like to. So it's a new feature of the channel, just a short, you know, four minute uh, weather forecast. Um, bring you an update for what's going on over the next two or three days. Um, later on, we're going to have a USA forecast, and we'll also have a uh, 10 to 14 day as well, including all regular feet, so it's a busy old day at Gasworth is today. Please like, share, subscribe on all the videos if you would like to uh, do that. Thank you so much, everybody. Right, so let's bring you an update what's going on uh, with ENSO then. So we'll begin with the cold and warm episodes by season chart but, uh, from CPC, NCEP, and NOAA. So this is depicting every ENSO event going back to 1950, where We've got these negative blue numbers, that's a signature of La Nina, where we've got the positive red numbers, that's a signature of El Nino. All important number is 0 0.5 degrees uh, below average for La Nina and 0 0.5 degrees above average for El Nino. Uh, half degree below for La Nina, half degree above for, uh, for El Nino. Right, let's come down then, have a look, and uh, we can see that we have been in a uh, weak La Nina, weak to borderline, mo borderline moderate La Nina through uh, the past winter, 2020-2021. So begin 2020 uh, with ENSO neutral condition, I thought, but the winter of 2019-20 was actually uh, the weakest El Nino on record. It turns out, uh, in retrospect, it was uh, just an ENSO neutral winter on the warm side. Who knew? Who knew? Never mind. Uh, we go through to the second half of 2020 and we reverse into a La Nina. There's no doubt about that. this. Uh, this La Nina will always be a La Nina. It will never be taken away in retrospect because the numbers are just too far beyond half a degree below average. So, so at the peak, which is for the trimetric period of October, November, December, you actually go down to uh, 1.3 degrees below average. That's borderline moderate uh, La Nina territory. Uh, current situation uh, and later that we have, uh, first number for 2021 for December, January, February is uh, minus 1.1, 1.5 1 .1 degrees below average for that tri-monthly period. So the La Nina continues uh, up to the end of the winter of 2020-2021. We'll probably see this reversing uh, in one of these uh, boxes just here. I suspect it would probably be this box, uh, but maybe this box. I think we'll still get one final negative uh, blue number placed into uh, that box. Whether that important number is half a degree below average. And to get it designated, you have to run over five trimonthly periods as well, which, of course, we have done quite easily. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven uh, in this box just here when it is eventually uh, placed into there. So, so yeah, it's been a proper, proper old uh, landing. Yeah, this one will be weak to borderline moderate. It is now drawing to a close. This is how uh, the sea surface temperature is looking across the ENSO region, which is the equatorial Pacific Ocean, where we did last uh, month's ENSO update back in February. So, of course, uh, the signature of El Nino or La Nina is seen through the equatorial Pacific from a uh, Peru over in South America to Indonesia uh, over here. This blue area that we see uh, on the 19th of December, uh, on science it's February, I should say, 2021, is quite clearly the uh, signature of La Nina stretched out across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So that's how the Ensa region looked last month. This is the very latest. So we still have the signature of La Nina. What's happened over the past month is that the, uh, the, the signature of La Nina, uh, the blue colours of the cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies have kind of faded through the central and western part of the ENSA region, but have actually strengthened a little bit over in the eastern part of the ENSA region, which is quite interesting, quite unusual for that to happen, uh, I think. So generally there's been a weakening of the La Nina signature. Generally, most central western parts of the ENSA region have returned to ENSA neutral, but La the La Nina signal continues and has actually strengthened over the past month in the eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Quite interesting how that's happened. Notice how the wider uh, north Northern Pacific Ocean, especially up here, has generally cooled. That's how it looked uh, last month, back in February. This is how it looks now. There's been a definite cooling of the sea surface temperature anomalies 
in the northern and northeastern Pacific Ocean, almost certainly in response to the La Nina. Remember what La Nina does? It turns down the thermostat. So uh, El Nino and La Nina are one of the ways that the Earth sort of regulates its own temperature. Uh, so, so when you have a, a La Nina push out, lots of cool sea surface temperature anomalies, lots of cool temperatures, if you like, and that sort of turns the thermostat down more widely. Uh, when you go to an El Nino, you sort of turn the thermostat up, you push out lots of heat content and, and turn the thermostat up. So, so it's almost like the, the, the way, one of the ways the Earth sort of regulates its own temperature uh, via, via the oceans, if you like. Eventually, we'll probably see uh, even the Atlantic cooling. I wouldn't be at all surprised if the Atlantic starts to cool later on in the year in response to this uh, La Nina. So that's what you're with what's happening there. Let's have a look at subsurface temperatures. This is from the uh, ENSO PDF, which is uh, updated every week from CPC, NCP, NOAA, and uh, NOAA. Always great to have a look at this. You do need Adobe, uh, Adobe to be able to uh, open the file, of course. So this, you have to think that uh, this is like the surface of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean just here. We've got Peru just there, and we have Indonesia over here and then these are the depths of the ocean from 50 meters all the way down to 300 meters very deep ocean of course so between like the surface and 100 meters we have cold and average sea surface temperature and particularly so in the eastern part of the uh equatorial pacific ocean so that's the reason we're seeing a little bit of strengthening of the land in your signature uh you know over the past month in the eastern portion of the Enso uh, region. Notice that through central and western parts of the Enso region, the uh, current average subsurface temperatures have actually uh, faded and weakened. Now, if we go lower down, we can see that from around 50 metres to 200 metres, we have this large mass, and it's a very large mass now, of uh, warmer than average uh, subsurface temperature anomalies, stretching a long way from like the far western part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean all the way to the central part of the equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, so this might be the beginnings of, of a shift to a warm event. This could be the beginnings of a shift to a warm event. However, I'm not sure that subsurface temperature is going quite high enough uh, for that. So we're not going into these red colours, like four to six degrees above average. They're sort of in these orange shadings, which is like one, uh, two, three degrees above average. But it is a large mass, isn't it? of uh, above average subsurface temperature anomalies. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that over the, uh, you know, over the next month. It does look as though these cold and average subsurface temperature is just under the surface, kind of being swamped, really, doesn't it, by this uh, much larger mass of, of warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies. So that will be interesting to see where that goes over the next month. It could be something, could be nothing. Right, uh, this happens at SOI as well. So the Southern Oscillation Index is an index that, that's reflecting the atmospheric state. So in the SOI, it's measuring air pressure between Darwin and Tahiti. So when the SOI is positive, you'll have uh, a La Nina type atmospheric setup. When the SOI is negative, you have an El Nino type atmospheric setup. This is from Queensland government. So uh, what's happened over the past month is that we start off with quite a bit of negativity of the SOI actually through the early part of March. We climb to an El Nino type uh, atmospheric setup and that of course brings to an end like uh, like um, La Nina really. So through early March we bring the La Nina to an end as the atmosphere shifts into uh, an El Nino type uh, setup. Uh, more recent days of uh, Generally been trading, uh, generally been trending uh, more positive though. So, uh, for example, here on the 13th March, we still have negativity of SOI then at minus 11.68. But more recent days, such as 20th of March at plus 5, 21st March at plus 8. 22nd of March at plus 9, uh, 23rd of March at plus 5, 24th of March at plus 7, 25th of March at plus 8, 26th of March at plus 9, uh, all reflective of like an atmospheric setup that is kind of uh, in, an, uh, in a landing year type state. More recent days have been much more towards end so neutral, I suppose. 28th of March at uh, plus 3, 29th of March at uh, 0.62, and 30th of March at uh, plus 1.15. They're much closer 
to Enso neutral. However, it does look as though that period of negativity of the SY, so an El Nino type aspect setup, it does look as though that period has come to an end and the action has possibly shifted a little bit more towards uh, La Nina once again, which is possibly why the sea surface temperature elements in the eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean have got colder. Right, so that's probably your take with the current situation. Let's have, let's have a look at some model uh, data before we go. Starting off with the CFS V2. So this, ha this is what the CFS V2 is forecasting for a uh, central part of the actual Pacific Ocean. Remember, we've got our temperature numbers on the side and the dates and periods are on the bottom. Where we are right now is around here. So uh, we're back at Enso Neutral, all being on the cold side of Enso Neutral. But Black Dash Line, which is beyond Southern Mean, keeps us on the cold side of Enso Neutral, really, for the next few months. But in St. half of summer and into autumn, the Ensemble Mean is shifting towards just about getting to landing your territory, but still really uh, Enso Neutral on the cold side. There are a few Ensemble Plume members, these just here, that are shifting a little bit more towards uh, a weak El Nino, however. Um, and the older ensemble members, which, which are the red uh, lines here, they they are the ones that are kind of more towards landing. So it might be that CFS is being shifted a little bit uh, more towards the El Nino side. That might be because we have that large mass of warm and average subsurface temperature on this. However, I think overall we say that CFS is quite solidly in uh, Enso neutral condition for the rest of the year up to uh, up to January actually 2022, which of course is just there. Right, that's that one done. Let's have a look at what Canon Sips is forecast. Maybe some trouble with tip. It's got dot com. If you're enjoying this Enso update for March 2021, then please can you smash your like button. Let us know in the comments what you think. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so a uh, current situation for March, of course, is that the landing your signature is weakening and fading there through the Equator Pacific Ocean. Let's run through the months and see what uh, Canonsips does. So we get through into uh, the summer. So this is taking us into uh, uh, July, and we see that we have a further uh, weakening of uh, the uh, of the uh, landing signature really. So, so uh, Enso neutral here with can sips uh, this month on the cold side of Enso neutral, but but we are you know uh, in Enso neutral conditions now uh, with this into the summer, going a little bit cold just to the south of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean though. That's what happens as we move further on into the year. So that's August, that's September, that's October. Now, getting to the autumn, it looks like the landing signature there is beginning to re-strengthen with CANSIP. So by October, we are beginning to re-strengthen the landing signature. Orbit is weak. You know, that is a weak landing year, but a definite re-strengthening of landing year with CANSIP there after being at Enso Neutral uh, through the summer. And that carries on up to the end of the year, that's December, quite clearly we have returned to a proper landing a signature there, proper landing signal uh, with those colder than average sea surface temperatures from Peru all the way over to Indonesia. So CANSIPS wants to bring us back to landing, but it takes a while to do so. We're at Enso Neutral now for the rest of the spring and into the summer. It's not really until the end of the summer and early autumn that CANSIPS starts to uh, re uh, redevelop the uh, landing. But it does uh, take us back to landing by the autumn, albeit again, that is a weak landing. ECMWF uh, looks like this. So this is the ensemble uh, plume from ECMWF for the central part of the actual Pacific Ocean. Uh, so again, where we are right now is somewhere around here, just on the cold side of Enso Neutral. This is the zero line just here. It's Enso Neutral, of course. So uh, we're landing you there, El Nino, just there. You see that the general trend with your ECMWF is to lift, um, you know, lift the sea surface temperature on up, actually, onto the warm side of Enso Neutral. Most of them are kind of through there. Um, so, so going on to warm side of Enso Neutral, there is a bit of a hint, maybe, that we might start to move more towards an El Nino uh, through the second half of this year. Of course, that's autumn uh, just there. Um, by the way, we may be into a weak uh, El Nino. How I think, I think we say, but with the uh, ECMWF on Summer Plume, the idea really is to just take things back to Enso Neutral and possibly onto the warm side of uh, Enso Neutral. Uh, overall, there are a few members that are still going for a La Nina as well. Some go for an El Nino. I think most of them are sort of just back to Enso neutral, maybe slightly favouring the warmer side 
of an Enzo neutral. Um, UK Met uh, looks like this. Grow to five. So uh, this is the C7 temperature on your forecast for April, May. Jim, can I show you Jam's day this week, by the way? Jam's day has been down for several days. I don't know what's happened, but but they've been inaccessible several days, unfortunately. Um, so this is how the UK Met is forecasting April, May, June in terms of the Enzo region. Basically back to Enzo uh, neutral, to be honest. Um, by the time we get through to June, July, August, sometime turning, we might be starting to see a little bit of an El Nino type signal there over in the eastern part of the actual Pacific Ocean. It's very weak and uh, it is really restricted to like the eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean, but it might be that Glossy 5 is starting to move into that sort of direction towards a weak eastern based, uh, perhaps El Nino. And finally, Beijing Climate Centre. So, uh, again, sea surface temperature, temperature anomaly forecast for, uh, from Beijing Climate Centre for April, for example. We have uh, the landing signal unravelling. So, back to enter neutral. We're on the cold side of enter neutral for April. By the time we get through to uh, July, though, we are seeing uh, an El Nio signal developing. So, look at this. Above average sea surface temperature anomalies appearing there. Uh, through the actual Pacific Ocean. It looks quite bizarre, doesn't it? Because it's cold on either side. So just to the south of the uh, actual Pacific Ocean here, it's cold on average. Just to the north of the actual Pacific Ocean, cold on average too. But in between, like we've got uh, an El Nino uh, developing there uh, with the uh, with the uh, temperature only going to around two to three degrees above average. So quite a strong use of El Nino uh, beginning to get going there uh, with the Beijing Climate Centre. Something like similar to that happened in uh, 2000. Nine, I think, uh, and, and the winter of o, uh, of uh, of 2010. By the time we get through to the end of the year, so it gets us through to November. Uh, we're sort of setting up like a Madokai, Madoki, Madokai uh, El Nino, which is a, a central a central base El Nino. So it's warmer through there rather than over on the eastern side. Of the actual Pacific Ocean. So uh, the Beijing Climate Centre is developing an El Nino through this summer, quite a strong one, and then uh, moves out into the central part of the actual Pacific Ocean uh, as we get through into the uh, into the autumn as like a moderate event. That's more of a moderate event as opposed to being strong on the temperature scale. We're kind of half, one and a half degrees above average, I think, generally there. So uh, a moderate Madokai or Madoki El Nino, central based El Nino. Uh, with Beijing Climate Centre is the idea by the end of the year. It's all food for thought, isn't it? Because we're at the spring predictability barrier right now, which means all of these models are going to be struggling to work out where we're going uh, with ENSO. So that's the caveat, really. But, but for the next month, you know, remain uncertain. By the time we get through to the end of May, I think we'll have a much better idea about what's happening. There are various options there, you know, got Kansits trying to bring back uh, a landing year by the end of the year. We've got the other models, uh, you know, ECM um, and CFS, much more towards Enso neutral. And then we've got UK Met possibly into a little bit of a development of El Nino through the summer. And Beijing Climate Centre definitely going for El Nino um, this summer. It's definitely going for an El Nino to develop this summer and become central based Madoki El Nino by the end of the year. So it's food for thought. We'll wait and see where it all happens. We'll update you again in April. I suspect we'll still be struggling probably in April. But by May, by May's end of update, we should have uh, a rather better idea about where things are going. That's what you're going to take everything anyway. So if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see the next answer update at the end of April. And uh, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. For the answer update for March 2021, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.